Hello, and welcome to the Ken Lau Show. This month, we're focusing on choosing the right floors in your panel and what you should consider when you're constructing it. I love making floor panels. Don't all puppets? <laughs> you might already know about choosing brighter floors if your markers are lowly expressed, or using, vice versa, some dimmer floors if the markers are very highly expressed. You can get away with that. But something you might also want to consider is your plan of analysis. Meaning, if for example you're looking at memory T cells, you might look at CD44 versus CD62L. Those are common markers that are used. Uh, you want to make sure that these guys are e easily distinguishable on the bivariate, that the populations can easily be gated and separated out. Uh, if the floors that you're using on those two have difficulties with one another in terms of spillover, that can create false positives, can make your life difficult because it's just harder to gate. Compensation makes me sad. Don't be sad. Auto compensation is your friend. Ah, 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 ah. There's something else you can try if you're having problems with some floors. For example, if you're using Alexa Floor 700 and Percy P Sci 5.5 together, you know that they can have issues with each other compensation wise, spillover wise, spreading error wise. So, if your population of cells isn't just one cell type, if it's a mix of many different kinds, what you can do is actually separate them out onto different populations. For example, you might put Alexa 4700 on CD4, which represents your T cells. You might put Percy Sci 5.5 on your B cells on CD19. And in that way, the two markers are never co-expressed, the floors will never see one another, and they won't create any kind of spillover issues. In other words, if you have two guests that you've invited to your dinner party and you know they really, really don't get along, you should probably, you should probably separate them out so that they're not constantly fighting with one another. All right. Yeah. Keep them separated so they don't have problems with one another. Okay, so this might be a little more understandable if you've got a panel to look at. So let's go ahead and try one out. How many colors are we doing, guys? Nine colors! Ah, 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 ah! <laughs> Alright, so welcome back. Uh, this, we haven't done a new panel in a while, so it's good to get some practice back in. This panel is designed for a customer who is actually interested in acute myeloid leukemia. So they've got a lot of markers here that they're particularly interested in. We can't necessarily get away with the method of putting a problematic floor or floor that has spillover issues onto a different cell population because chances are in this situation most of the cells are going to co-express these markers so fortunately that isn't an easy way out. But there are other things you can take into consideration. Um, the first thing you would likely do here is assign some floors based on the uh, expected abundance level of these markers. So. Hopefully you have some idea of what you expect these markers to be expressed on your cells. If you don't know, the best place to go is to look at literature. Uh, if you can't find anything in literature, sometimes you can go off of uh, the reference we provide below, which is about the expression of common surface molecules on blood cells. That gives you some information. And if that doesn't help you out, what you can do is always scroll down here. When you pick a floor uh, for a marker, what you can do is look at RQC testing to see what it looks like. Now the cells don't necessarily always represent this type of cells you'll be testing, but at least it gives you some idea of what you can expect the expression levels to be. So in that manner, you will assign floors based on what you expect that expression to be. For example, CD45 is typically a common uh, leukocyte marker, so it's usually very highly expressed, um, not easy to or not difficult to find and you can put something like Alexa Floor 700 on it. Alexa Floor 700 is relatively dim, it's only a 2 on a scale of 1 to 5, so you can easily get rid of that floor there um, and then save your best floors for markers that you may not know the expression for or expect them to be very low. So in this case, 
what we're considering is also bivariate plots. Um, this customer happened to give us some information on what they're expecting to compare to one another in a bivariate. If you're not familiar with bivariate, that's a plot just where you're comparing two markers simultaneously. So when you're picking these guys out, you want to make sure that there's no problems with the floors on these two markers because they are going to be compared against one another. You don't want any spillover or spreading error to create issues where the populations become hard to define. So uh, I'll bring up this chart real quick. Uh, what he's planning on comparing is CD117 versus CD38, CD36 versus CD33, CD33 versus HLADR, CD36 versus HLADR, and CD38 versus CD34. And if you want a little more help, you can check out this additional reference below. This uh, is a sort of PDF or PowerPoint presentation where the person is going over important markers for acute myeloid leukemia. So that's a good reference for you to check out if you want to take a look. In the meantime, uh, for this panel, you want to make sure that all of the things compared in these bivariates are going to be fine against one another. So let's just take a look at the floors that we've assigned in this case. Starting with the CD117 versus CD38, uh, we put CD117 onto APC. CD38 was put onto PE size 7. So those two should be fine. Looking at the next group of markers, CD33 versus CD36, that's BV421 versus, uh, let's go down here for CD36, FITC. Again, a fine combination, CD33 versus HLEDR. BV421 against BV510. There is some spectral overlap between these two guys, but they should be okay. Uh, you shouldn't be worried about the potential nonspecific binding of the two. That's not going to be an issue between 421 and 510 here, we don't believe. Uh, the next matchup that you're looking at is CD36 versus HLADR, FITC versus BV510. I know some of you might be concerned because the spectral overlap between the two looks similar, but they are not optimally stimulated by the other's laser, so that should be fine as well. CD38 versus CD34. Uh, CD34 is on Dazzle 594. That's one of our newest floors, the tandem floor uh, that we've talked about so much. That's a Texas Red equivalent, so an excellent choice, particularly if you have that yellow-green laser to optimally stimulate it it is being compared against CD38, uh, which is on PE size 7. So those are both PE tandems, but compared to one another, they should be fine. There shouldn't be too much spectral overlap between the two, nothing that compensation wouldn't be able to take care of. So again, the goal here is to make sure that you don't create anything that might essentially break your system where compensation can't take care of the issue for you. Um, compensation is not a four-letter word. Uh, it's something that you can do regularly and it should be fine for these potential setups that we've got here so that's always good uh, additional note that I do want to mention and that's for something like HLADR originally the customer had asked to maybe put it on something like APC size 7 but you always want to be wary with putting markers that can have variable expression onto floors that could create spillover issues and what might create a spillover issue in this case, it's APC size 7 because there is always some spillback from the tandem into uh, the donor channel. So in this case, that would be APC. So because HLADR can have variable expression depending on how stimulated or how upregulated it is on those cell types, that can create variable levels of spillback into APC. So we don't want that in this case. That's why we avoided putting it on APC size 7. The same goes for putting it on something like an extremely bright floor. So something like your uh, level fives of your brightest floors, your PE, your APC, your Brilliant Violet 421. If you were to put that kind of marker onto a super bright floor, if that marker's expression level becomes uh, really, really highly upregulated, there's the chance that because it's on such a bright floor, it can create some serious spillback issues uh, into neighboring channels. So typically, if you have a variable expression of that marker, you want to put it on something maybe like a level 3 to a level 4. Uh, in this case, we've put it on Brilliant Violet 510, so that's a good fit for this guy. So when you're building these panels, it's always like a Rubik's Cube. You just sort of have to twist things into place, reassign floors. Um, 
it's always a shifting puzzle, and you shouldn't be afraid of reassigning floors as you see fit to, to give you the best possible panel. Um, for example, if we had assigned our first set of floors based on our expression levels and thought it was great, but then you look at the um, you look at the combination of markers you're looking at in the bivariate, for example, CD117 versus CD38, if somehow I had ended up with Alexa floor 700 versus pure CP sci 5.5 in that case, that's not ideal. Um, I would move some floors around to hopefully avoid that conflict within that bivariate, if at all possible. I mean, this is only a nine color panel. Um, there are other options available, uh, hopefully with the, with the machine that they've got set up. Uh, but there's always flexibility. There's always things you can do to move things around. You can always contact us at Tech Support for more help, um, which will be in the links below. And you can also use the panel builder uh, as you see fit to sort of build your own panel and see how that goes. So let us know if you have any questions. And in the meantime, we'll go back to the Ken Love Show. I hope you guys found that informative. And remember, today's lesson has brought to you by the words And the numbers five, nine, four, okay. This is for our newest tandem floor, PE Dazzle 594. Check it out. Uh, it's an equivalent to PE Texas Red. And use our newest promotion, which offers a 30% discount on PE Dazzle 594. Like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, and join us next month when we've got, when we've got more stuff for you. Say goodbye, puppets. Goodbye, puppets! So we can just do that bit first. <laughs> Ooh, the director! <laughs>